Hey everybody, Inabu here with a new video, and in this video, we're going to be comparing my favorite flight controller and its new big brother, going from the Betaflight F3 to the F4. Now, touching on the F3, the F3 has the MPU 6000 gyro in it and can run all of the latest Betaflight features, and that was their biggest thing about when FPV model released this board was that the latest and greatest features from Betaflight all compatible. Betaflight OSD, all of the gyro features, the filtering, the works. Everything was available on this board and it was a flight controller, power distribution board, and the Betaflight OSD all built into one. So there were a couple of issues with this board that needed to be addressed and FPV model addressed it in the F4 board. Now, one of the main things that you'll notice that are different between the boards is this board obviously is an F3. This board here being the F4 gives you a lot easier ability to make sure that you're not maxing out the CPU. So you can run 8K, 8K on the cycling, all of the filters, the OSD, and not have to worry about hitting high CPU cycles. The other thing that they changed was the original F3 version had the slot to be able to put a micro SD card in it for black boxing. That is removed on the F4 and onboard cache took its place. So for those who were worried about the SD card being ejected in a crash, that is no longer an option. We can get our black boxing with 16 megabytes of onboard memory and not have to worry about that card being lost on a crash or corrupted from an, a short, whatever the case may have been. Another thing, the original F3 board had a 5 volt back with a 3 amp ability. FPV model ramped that down so we still have a 5 volt back but it went down to 1.5 amps and I believe the reason why they did that is to compensate for any overheating issues or any of the shorting issues that may have occurred in the F3. A couple of things I read online said some people had some worries about that amp just that amperage just being pushed a little too hard so I'm thinking and this is all speculation that the reason why they ramped it down to 1.5 was to give us a little bit more stability and heat control on the F4. Now both boards are still using that MPU 6000 gyro but with any F4 you're definitely going to want a soft mount. Unfortunately this board doesn't have the ability to have the goggets for the soft mounting built in but hey we all know that there's plenty of little stubbies and things you can use to soft mount your flight controller so that's not a real big deal. Now one of the new key features for everyone using those 32-bit ESCs is that the F4 board has pads, telemetry pads, at all of the points where you're soldering up your ESCs to be able to get telemetry from your ESC. And that's a big deal for people using the 32-bit ESCs who want to monitor um, voltage on the ESCs if there's a voltage center built in. You want to make sure you're controlling and seeing what your temperature is. You want to see where your speed is on the actual motors themselves. So this makes that a lot easier to wire up than it did on the F3 where you'd have to splice your wires together and most likely go to the RX3 for your UART. Now, these boards still basically follow the same form factor they still have the signal pad and ground pad for the ESCs on the top and on the bottom you have your positive and your negative. Same thing with the F4. You still got your positive and negatives on the bottom, your signal pads on the top, your current sensor is here. But one of the other things that they did do was they gave you a dedicated 3.5 volt for you spectrum guys. Okay. You don't have to bridge the pads on the bottom like you did on the F3 to get your 3.5 or 5 volt. You now have a dedicated pad, and I don't know if we can see this 
in the camera but right here you've got your 3.3 and your spectrum okay you do still however have to bridge if you want to get battery voltage to your RAM port or if you want to use 5 volts for your RAM port okay so overall I'm still a fan of the Betaflight F4 board as well as the F3. I've got a couple of these still in. And if you look around, you can find these at a decent price. They're still going for about $30, $35 for the F3. But ready to um, race day quads. They've I've seen these on their site right now, which is where I got mine. $35. Okay, for an F4 Betaflight F4 board with the works built in, $35 is a great price. I'll leave some links in the description below, but if there's any questions anyone has about either one of these boards, please feel free to comment. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And I just want to put this out there that doing these videos for you guys is a pleasure. I'm just trying to get the little bit of information that I know out there for the new guys like myself. There's plenty, and I mean plenty of people out there who just have way more knowledge than I do. Cough, cough, Joshua Bardwell, cough, cough. But if there's anything you guys want to ask me, please put a comment below. I'll try to answer as quick as I can. As always, I'm really appreciative for you guys liking, subscribe, share. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good night.